Welcome back to Read Only Memories. We just found out about another client who went to the chop shop and got some upgrades. So let's go visit them and see if they can help us. This is the building, Nelavanda. Mr. Atsuka must do well for himself, considering the neighborhood. Not the priciest section of Neo SF, but nice enough for a self-employed tech blogger. Perhaps we should just ring the bell? We both know it won't be that easy, but these things have a certain order they have to be done in. Nah, let's just throw a brick through the window. The design is just slightly worn, from weather and general outside hazards but it's in surprisingly good shape. Newsroom employee. Oh, hey, yeah. What are you doing here? They were at, um... They were at, uh, TMI Entertainment. They're holding a colorful umbrella. Wish you had thought ahead like that. Hey, didn't I see you earlier at TMI? Nice to meet you. I'm Sky. Can, can we have a conversation? My gym's closed this week for the hell for the holiday. Gonna see some family tomorrow. Cool. <laughs> what are they doing? Are they waiting for a bus or something? Why do autocabs take so long to get out to this part of the city? Don't they know people have places to go? Oh, that's what they're waiting for. Palm tree. Did you know that palm trees used to be much more common? Common around? Almost a city staple. Okay, I guess I'll just use the doorknob like a normal person. But first, my ID. Bloop. The keycard lock doesn't respond very well to your ID. Rejected. <laughs> Greetings, guests. I'm LJ2. Shitaro Atsuku's... Atsuka's... Atsuka's... There we go. Atsuka's ROM. Shitaru was not expecting any company at this hour. But I will let him know you're here. Sorry for the wait. Please hold on for just a moment while I fetch him. Hmm. That's encouraging. Should I choose ellipses, ellipses, or ellipses? Let's go with ellipses. Maybe try the bell again, Nelavanda? <laughs> Greetings, guests. I am LJ. Okay, same thing. Was not expecting any company this hour, but I will let him know. Mm. Same thing as before. Again? Excuse me, Jesus. That was odd. What's taking so long? Yeah, something's going on. Maybe the whole thing's just a, a ruse to make people just give up? I'm guessing the blogger might be dead. What is going on? All right, third time's the charm, right? Once more, with feeling, Nelabanda. <laughs> okay, I'll put my all into it. <laughs> Greetings, yes, yes, yes. One of these days, I'm going to blow a fuse. Thank Hayden for system redundancies. Well, that's that. Let's see if we can find a way into Mr. Atsuka's apartment ourselves. Let's do the window. The pane itself is locked, of course. Hmm. I can't even use items on it, so I guess I can't break it. Oh, hey! Fire escape. I see you hiding up there. Mr. Atsuka's apartment is on the second floor. This fire escape should give us access to his window. We just need something to let us reach it. 
I'm sure there's some piece of de detritus or loose end lying around we could use. That's how these things always work. Hmm. I wonder about your umbrella. You weren't prepared for the weather, huh? Your ROM looks fancy enough to handle that. About that. Hmm? You want my umbrella? Not for the weather. We need to use the hook handle to reach the fire escape ladder, so we can pull it down. Oh, you live here and lost your keycard, huh? I totally understand. I do that all the time. But look, as much as I'd love to give you this umbrella, I'm kind of using it right now. Where I come from, see, we're all about equal trades. It's part of our culture. Gym culture? Sorry, but unless you've got anything interesting to exchange for it, I'm gonna hold on to this. Don't want to get wet. Mmm. What could I trade? My headphones? <laughs> My spoiled milk? I'm trying to cut out dairy. I don't think it's dairy anymore. It's something else. Hmm. These are pretty cool. But I'm not big into music. I like video games more. And there's no mic on this headset. Like video games. Where could I find video games? There were some video ga like some old video game consoles at Hayden's apartment, although I think they might be broken at this point, and there also was some at Zinn's place, but that's a crime scene. Want my gun? Whoa. Calm down, calm down. I'll give you the... No! I, I, I'm not... Uh. What? She wasn't going to shoot you. Oh. Then you can't have it. Okay, good. I, did, I wasn't trying to hold you up for your umbrella. Talk about petty theft. Yeah, none of this stuff is going to work. Okay, so video games, huh? Vigi games. Let's find some Vigi games. Can I go back to Hayden's apartment? Like, could I even get inside? Where's Hayden's place? No, seriously, where's Hayden's place? Uh, erm. Um. Let's try K Gob, although I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's still very much a crime scene. Probably not getting into there, huh? Can't go back in. Didn't think so. Hmm. Let me think about this one. Hey, I just went back here to where I was talking to Starfucker and Ollie, and there's a miscolored brick here. You palm along the wall, a loose brick wobbles in the cracks. Hmm, do you think it would be okay to take that? Pull the brick out? What the heck would I use it for? I don't know. I'll find a use for it. Take it. It's thick and heavy, but you can carry it around and maybe even find a use for it. Hmm. Now I wonder if I actually can throw a brick through the window. But I couldn't use any items on the window, so I doubt it. Let's try the umbrella route first. Back to searching. So this is interesting. I went back to the Stardust Club, and the bouncer was not outside for some reason manning the door. They're inside. So I wonder if something's going on with them. Looks like the bouncer and the VIP bouncer are talking. Ah, so this is where the bouncer is. Looks like they're off-duty for some reason. Today's my last day off before the holidays. But I can't seem to stay away. They just have the day off, I guess. Find another place to be? Mmm, welcoming. What about Jess? Let's let's not talk to Jess. Actually, you know what? So I can't actually throw the brick through the window, because like I said before, you can't actually use items on it. But I just thought, what if I just hit the fire escape with a brick? 
Hmm. That isn't entirely a bad idea, but it's not exactly the most elegant method. Don't you think an investigative journalist like you can avoid heedless, brutalish, br brutalish, what? Heedless, brutish flap and find another way? I'm sure I can, but time is kind of of the essence here. Let's just do it. See? I still find your methods uninspired. After you. I don't care. I'm guessing the blogger's probably dead, so... We should probably be as fast as possible in case they're not dead and we can maybe still save them. Ooh, looks like... yeah, this one's open. This window is unlocked. Let's go in. Oh god. Yep. What's that smell, Turing? There's a body. I'm not sure, Nelavanda. My olfactory sensors detect chemicals associated with decaying food and... something else I can't pin down. It's unfamiliar to me. Oh boy, what's in here? That's better. That's... Wait, there's somebody in the chair. I don't know what the hell that is, but there's somebody in the chair. It's gotta be him. I mean, that's the ROM. That ROM's really cute! Let's take a look around. Yeah. Shitaru must be plugged into the mesh. He hasn't even noticed us. I feel like I could scream without him knowing. <laughs> there Turing goes. Mr. Otsuka! Nothing. Hello, guest. Oh, look at it! I'm Mr. Otsuka's ROM, LJ2. Welcome. Shotaru has been a bit under the weather recently, so he's not been receiving anyone. He is trying very hard to keep up with his deadlines, but I will check and see if he has a moment to speak with you. We just checked and he seems to be busy. Is there anything else I might assist you with? A drink, perhaps? Hmm. I think he's just a zombie at this point. Assuming he's not actually dead, I think he's just plugged into the mesh and he's just being used as an, as an outlet through which to write articles. But he's not actually writing them. How long has your owner been... ill? Shitaru has been a bit under the weather for some time, but I could not tell you precisely when. He rarely has visitors or goes on outings, so this is only slightly abnormal behavior for him. In fact, you are the first visitor he has had in a while. Several days, in fact. Perhaps you could ask him about it yourself. I will check and see if he has a moment to speak with you. When was your last diagnostic check? I run regular self-checks and have noticed no irregularities in either my hardware or software. I appreciate your concern. If you think I'm behaving erratically, perhaps you could mention it to Shotaru. He is skilled at maintenance. Is your owner still making blog updates? He is. Shotaru is a diligent man, even in the face of such adversity. If you are a reader of his work, his next significant piece will be going online tomorrow. I will not spoil it for you. Very well. Let me know if you need anything. I'm always happy to assist. Look at it. It's so peppy and eager to help. Even though it doesn't actually understand what's going on at all. Poor thing. What do you sound like? Something sounds wrong. Just lots of weird noises. What about the spoiled milk? Ah, a delivery for Mr. Otsaku. Otsuka, rather. You can't take it. No, you can't take my spoiled milk. Alright, what's up with this food? Old greasy bag of to and fro. A fast food chain the state is famous for. Flies are circling like vultures. When's the last time... Shotaru ate? Yeah. 
figure they probably weren't still alive. That ROM is obviously completely malfunctioning. It doesn't... It didn't even understand its owner was dead. Oh, oh no. We're too late. How long has he been here? It looks like he's been here for a couple of days. Maybe a little longer. That means whoever did this... ...did it before we even found out about all of this. Stabbed in the chest. Right through the back of the chair. Looks like it severed his carotid artery. I don't want to make any assumptions, but... ...I can't help but wonder if this was done by the same person who assaulted Zin. His ROM doesn't even think anything is wrong. We need to hurry. If I'm right, everyone we've talked to so far is in more danger than we thought. Someone is cleaning up. We have to find his computer so I can see if I can pull anything relevant off of it. You interrogate his ROM. Maybe you can find out why it's acting so strange. Alright, let's try this again. Come on, little buddy. Okay, we'll wait. Is there anything else I might assist you with? A drink, perhaps? Shitaru is dead, LJ2. It shut itself down again, Elevanda. Let's see if we can pull some useful information off of Mr. Atsuka's computer. If we can find it. Poor thing. I mean, it's probably just malfunctioning, but I can't help escape the feeling that the little ROM might be just traumatized by its owner's death. And that it's just in, in the denial phase of it or something. We shouldn't disturb him. No, I suppose not. A fancy news feed made of multiple streams on the mesh idly plays on the TV. Muted. What a blocky desk. There aren't any drawers or shelves. It's touch sensitive. The entire desk, this entire desk, must be Mr. Atsuka's computer. Oh. I'll start downloading these files. I have finished my examination of Mr. Atsuka's computer in Elevanda. I didn't find anything particularly interesting, but I copied some files to be examined later. If we're all done here, we should hurry and go warn Charlie, Sympathy, and perhaps even Nanya about what we found. They may be in immediate danger, so we must act quickly. You're right. At the same time, though, I want to look at all the stuff around here. There's so many things to examine. Uh, okay, I'm gonna examine the room first. I'm sorry, I have to. I have to. I don't. I mean, I don't have to, but I feel like I have to. Cause things. Like, look at this cute Christmas tree with this tiny little presents. Eh. This Christmas tree might be small, but it has a lot of spirit. It may be a pocket tree, but don't pickpocket it. This panel controls the lights and air conditioning of the whole apartment. Hey! Sorry. <laughs> Let there be light. Collection of books about writing. On writing good. Antique wub speakers. They use actual wires to connect to the receiver. Be careful. If you accidentally disconnect them, you'll never be able to get those things working again. A vintage York's amp. It has a connector for plugging in old phones. <laughs> what? You fiddle with the dial. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Okay, we should we should probably go warn people about you know the fact that they might be about to die. Let's go. Hey, Sky. So, we didn't need your umbrella after all. 
wanted to see if the gym in Dally City is still open. Cool. Goodbye. Okay, who are we supposed to warn? Uh, Charlie, Nanya, and... Sympathy? For some reason, I forgot who Charlie is. Who's Charlie? I'm, I'm blanking on who Charlie is. Let's do the other ones first, and maybe it'll come back to me. Um, let's go here. Oh, Charlie Nova! Right, Charlie Nova. Oh, right, I gotta talk my way in. She and Charlie are gone anyway, so... Can you come back another time? Oh, uh, where did they go? <laughs> Those ears. I'm not supposed to let you back in. Sympathy seemed kind of annoyed when she left. Sorry. Not gonna tell me where they went? Damn it. Hmm. Guess we gotta find them. Let's try the Stardust Club. Maybe they went there? I guess not. Alright, what about Nanya? Or Nanyo? Whatever their name is. Shit. What the hell are you doing back here? Wait, wait. Let me guess. You stole some of my files, or hacked my brain, or used telepathy or some shit, found out someone else got hit by your little ghost in the machine, and when you got there, you found out he was deader than New Disco. Um... How the hell did you know that? That close enough? Um... That is distressingly correct. Well, it wasn't much of a damned guess. Charlie's dead. What? What? Charlie's... The autocab he was in drove him right off the bridge and into the bay. Shit. Somebody hacked his autocab. Somebody or something. Would Big Blue do that on its own? I don't know. It's been all over the news over the last hour, and I'm not looking to be on the news next. I'm getting the hell out of the USF, and I'm gonna forget that I ever saw you, ever knew Charlie, ever give a shit about any of this. Hell, maybe I'll pick up a new career. I'm most likely to get murdered for being a fry cook. That's for damn sure. I'm out of here. Why is this happening? There was no one in that car. No heat signatures, no wireless emissions, nothing. That wasn't even an auto cab, it's a manual. What the... How, what controlled it? How? How is that even possible? I, I don't know. That's it, this is too much, I've had enough. I don't care who's controlling the news anymore. Everyone we've talked to so far has died, and I can't live with any more blood on my hands. We're done investigating this lead any further as of right now. We can't stop at this point, we're in too damn deep. We need to figure out what is going on and we need to stop it. I, honestly, I don't think it's related to us. Especially since the, the tech blogger was killed before we even were involved at all. I don't think it's related to us. I think it's just that we're trying, we're un unraveling the threads and someone or something is killing off all the people that might be able to, uh, like, all the people that might be able to incriminate them or incriminate somebody. Everybody that's even tangentially connected, I guess, is just being killed off. I think it's just a coincidence. It's not our fault, Turing. Logically, I, I know that, Nelavanda. We haven't set out to harm anyone. But 
someone is using us as a stalking horse, hiding behind our investigation to clean up whatever this is. If they want to keep digging up people involved in this, they're going to have to do it without our help. Hmm. Could Dr. Fairlight be involved, I wonder? I wonder. I'm just trying to think of who, uh, you know, who we've been involved with for basically the entire game that could possibly be watching us or something. Obviously, Fairlight couldn't be watching us like himself. He's, you know, he's in a, a massive, like, wheelchair medical device thing. But he would know how to hack things. Hmm. I don't know. We don't have any other leads anyway. Thank you for sticking with me, though. Perhaps Tomcat is finished going through all of the data that we found... Uh, we found them so far. Let's head back to the apartment for now. Ah, home sweet home again. Such that it is. And before you say anything, I don't feel the need to talk over the events of the day. Too much has happened. I've already forwarded everything we rooted out to Tomcat, both about Hayden's research and our abortive search into the modified mesh articles. They said that they would be over in the morning to discuss our next steps. I'd suggest that we both get some rest. Yeah, I don't feel very safe, though. Especially with the shitty security on the door and the propped open window in this crappy apartment. Honestly, I'd rather stay at... just somewhere else, a hotel or something. But Jesus, even going into a hotel, they'd be able to find us. I mean, if they can hack, if they can hack any damn car they want, drive an autocab into the bay, or somehow take control of a manual car, then they could find us anywhere we'd want to stay. <laughs> if that's what you want, Turing. Perhaps things will look better in the morning, but I have a feeling we're going to be even busier than ever. Good night, Nelavanda. I don't think we're gonna have a good night. I think something's gonna happen. Oh. We didn't die. Rise and shine, you sleepy layabouts. I've got a whole crop of things to do, and not a lot of time to get them done. Wait, how did you get into my apartment? Don't tell me the door, security. Ah, that wasn't hard at all. Did you know that your door is just a knockoff of the Yes, yes, I did know that, actually. Still, would it have killed you to knock? It took me about a minute and a half to break in with my custom lips device. Why did you make the entry code the birthday of your first dog, Annie? How did you know it was the, end the birthday of my first dog? That's what I asked her. Okay, Tomcat and Turing, you, sh you two should get a room or something. In fact, why don't you just have my room, because this is terrible. I'm going to get a new apartment, one with a better door. And you two can live happily ever after. <laughs> Anyhow, I felt a little silly when I realized your window was propped open and I could have just used that. Or you could have knocked. Deja vu. Y'all should be more careful about that. Though I can't blame you much. The climate control in here seems to be lacking in the stamina department. I get it, my door sucks. Can we get back on track? <laughs> sure. What have you learned from the files we sent you? Honestly, I think we've covered most of the important points of fear creation just by talking to the people involved. All the files we got from that Vincent fellow covers all of that in greater detail. You can go through it when you want, but it don't really tell us much we didn't already know. There is one thing that stands out, though. At least from what I've read so far. Oh? 
Yeah, see, Hayden's goal wasn't to make a machine intelligence, per se, right? He wanted to make a machine system that could contain human-like intelligence. Right. Right, that is true, right? Hayden wanted to make something that could contain a human-like intelligence, but instead of trying to do that directly, I, he wanted to make something that was uh, a robot that basically had human intelligence already and was hoping that then that could contain human-like intelligence. Kind of like uh, attacking the problem from a different angle, instead of going at it directly. And even just from his notes, his programming work is, well, it's something else. Elegant. Artful. I'm just a kid banging on pots and pans compared to Hayden. Looking at his notes about my interfacing between your AI core and the Lips OS, I barely managed to tape the two together at a level he approved of. But I, I think I'm getting off track here. What I'm trying to say is, he didn't handwrite your code, Turing. No one did. Hayden wrote a program that automatically generates a new machine intelligence based off of the hardware profiles the system is installed on. Hmm? Melody mentioned something about that. What does that mean? Oh well. Wow. These are some very different options. Well, it means the first and the third one. We can make more. The artificial intelligence or program or whatever. I mean, is the pr is the program that generates these intelligences, is it itself intelligent? I don't know, but it can make more. And it also means you don't have to be alone. Yeah, it means you don't have to be alone, Turing. Exactly. We could, assuming we can get our hands on Hayden's actual source code for you. Generate new machine intelligences. You wouldn't be the only one around anymore, Turing. Oh. I... Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal, huh? I hardly know what to say. But all this gets a damn sight more complicated once you consider the stuff I found in the research we got. About Big Blue and Parallax's planned launch. Vincent speculated that Hayden's research into me would have interfered with the launch, and that's why they... Turing. That's why someone had him killed. The potential for abuse of an AI like Big Blue is almost beyond belief. Even if I don't go into all the crooked shit the people running Parallax could pull off with it. I mean, you're different, Turing. Your personality profile would degrade pretty quickly outside of your original hardware. So we don't gotta worry too much about you going haywire, right? But Big Blue ain't got that limitation. If it decides to go off reservation... Well, we'd be screwed. Good and proper. How likely is that? I'd say it's inevitable. Almost guaranteed. Hmm. So maybe Big Blue is doing this on its own. Could it be that no particular person is calling these hits to get these people killed or whatever? Maybe... Maybe no particular person is particularly evil. It's just Big Blue that's doing it on its own? Without anybody even knowing? Without the higher-ups even knowing? They've lost control of their machine? In fact... It's already happened. What? Their prototype build. Baby Blue? I'm almost certain it's loose on the mesh. The research notes from Parallax on the project show clearly and with certainty. 
the test AI was shut down once it tried fiddling with data on the mesh net in the hope that it would increase its chances of survival. Oh god. So that's probably what Baby Blue and or Big Blue is doing. It's so intelligent that it knows if its launch goes unsuccessfully and countries try to, try to ban it or something that they might kill it. It's... sapient itself. It wants to protect itself. I guess it didn't think that doing scary shit like that would get it turned off. But that was almost a year ago. And I think Baby Blue is the bugger that was changing all those articles on the mesh to be vaguely pro-parallax, or at least anti-human revolution. Do you think it had anything to do with the attacks on Zin, Shotaru, Nanya, and Charlie? Uh, I don't know. We can't rightly rule it out. It might have found an agent in the real world to keep its existence secret, but I think that's a little unlikely. So far, Baby has been really careful to stay hidden and quiet. I've got algorithms running non-stop on my rig at home trying to track it down. Or at least the stuff it's changed. And I'm having a hell of a time nailing it down. Killing people is messy as hell, and runs against its apparent goal of convincing the public that AI ain't scary. I think we have a third party trying to clean it all up. And my money is on someone from Parallax. They might not have meant to kill Hayden. But I bet they're in full damage control mode now. They don't care who gets hurt. How does this tie back to Turing? I think we gotta do something to stop the launch of Big Blue. The hell yes we do. It's too dangerous. I don't want a company like Parallax in sole control of the most powerful machine intelligence on the planet. If we can get Hayden's original source code for Turing and upload it onto the mesh through Parallax's servers, we can turn every single ROM into a sapient individual. Right, the program will generate an intelligence based on the hardware it's installed in, right? So every ROM, no matter how big or how small, could turn into a sapient individual. Everyone different, everyone unique. At least everyone with different hardware would be unique. I guess if you have two, you know, multiple models of the exact same hardware, I, I guess it would generate the exact same... intelligence? Which would be interesting, because you'd have essentially clones to begin with, but I guess their intelligence would start to diverge as their experiences differ. Uh, I think I'm starting to think of Soma now. Uploading people's brains into machines and stuff like that, and consciousness copies, and... Uh, anyway, let's keep going. Whoa. That'll stop Big Blue from being able to become the monolithic threat we're scared of. Each individual ROM could self-modify to prevent Big, Big from using their resources for processing and data gathering. Right, because every single ROM is part of some giant, like, cloud computing for Big Blue. So, give the robots true intelligence, and they don't have to be part of the, the cloud. Without them, Big is smart, sure but not omniscient or omnipresent. And I wouldn't be alone anymore. There would be... thousands. Thousands of ROMs just like me. Well, you're cutting edge of ROM tech, Turing. Most of these ROMs wouldn't be quite as smart or capable. But if I do it right, the code should propagate across the mesh to any new ROMs activated. It'll be a self-sustaining thing. You'll be in good company soon enough. It's a big decision. We're talking about the metaphorical singularity. The point of no return. Is it okay for us to make this decision for the entire world?
Well, I'd prefer not to have to make the decision, but it's either this or Big Blue goes goes crazy. We can't let that happen. This is far better. We don't have any other choice. Exactly. This is going to happen, one way or another. Either Parallax gets to control the debut of machine intelligence, or we let the ROMs control themselves. What do you think, Nelavanda? Well, I know what I think, but... It's up to you, Turing. Only you know if the world is ready. I'm not sure I'm up for that kind of responsibility. But... I think that even if it is a shock for the world, there's no time like the present. Despite all the political back and forth over hybrids and brain-controlled androids, the world is becoming more and more comfortable with the idea of non-human people. If we let Parallax dictate how the very first machine intelligence is introduced, who knows how long it'll be before an AI like me can be integrated into society normally. Let's do this, Tomcat. On our terms, not theirs. Yes, I love nothing more than a little good old-fashioned technology-inspired anarchy. First things first, we need to get our hands on Turing's source code. The research notes we've gotten so far are helpful, and I think it's given me an idea of how to spread a little bit of Turing all over the place, but they don't actually have Hayden's programs included. I can't replicate them myself, so we'll have to steal them. Thankfully, we have the best hacker in NeoSF right here. <laughs> You're gonna make me blush, Turing. We can get the source code from one of Parallax's secondary data centers. It's probably stored in a couple of different places, but I already have one in mind. And it's on Treasure Island. I've done a little groundwork already, but I'm gonna need physical access to do my thing. I suppose that's us. You're a peach, hun. We've got a couple of ideas on how to get y'all in, but I think we're gonna need to mostly play it by ear. We should do it soon, though. First thing this morning. Guard shift don't change until 8 when the office opens, so they'll be sleepy and distracted. Once y'all have done that, I think I can incorporate the code into a custom firmware update that'll wake any ROM it's installed on. We'll have to upload it, physically, to Parallax's main server farm. And from there, the ROMs will install it like a normal patch from the company. So, don't set anything on fire right away, you hear? It'll be a pain to get into Parallax's main complex otherwise. That sounds like a workable plan. I hope you don't mind if I take a short walk, Tomcat. I know I gave the go-ahead on this, but I still need to think a few things through. Sure thing, dearie. I'll hash out a rough plan by the time you get back. Nilavanda can help. Call us if you need anything. Thank you. I won't be long. Well, I guess I should say thanks for helping out. But I... I kinda need to get something off my chest. I'm actually glad Turing went out. They're a bit naive, and I'm not sure they'd really understand. There's enough shit to worry about without me piling more on top. Sheesh. Where do I start? Uh, I guess at the beginning. Take your time. The beginning. Yeah. Okay. I told you I grew up in Napa, right? Well, over the years, it's kind of grown into a nice little insular community of moderately to extremely wealthy old people. And my parents were no exception. I was a little too different for their tastes. 
They never really gave me any hell about it. But things in the house were tense. Especially after my sister Catherine moved out. Eventually, she was set up securely in Neo SF, and she offered to let me live with her until I got out of school. I think my parents were a little relieved to see me out, and I was ecstatic to be staying with her. I worshipped the ground she walked on, and that was before I found out what she did for a living. She was flashy and colorful and a whirlwind of activity, and she was a brilliant hacker. She was... Tomcat. Hmm? Are... are you saying you took her name? She let me learn at her feet, and once I was good enough, folded me into her little... Kedra of crackers hell-bent on changing the world. She's the one who orchestrated the original hack on Parallax, exposing to the world the holes in their original MeshNet security. I was just along for the ride. But I figured out that she always knew she'd be taken down. Something that big, that brazen. She was looking at serious jail time, and willing to eat it to do what we all thought was right. I couldn't let her throw her entire life away. She was always better at software than hardware, so I rigged all of our computers to self-destruct in the flashiest way possible. When the feds showed up at her door, all of our server farms were already up in smoke. I gave them quite a fireworks show. Before she could stop me, I turned myself in as the true Tomcat and took credit for the whole job. Oh. She tried to talk me out of it, but without the physical evidence, they couldn't prove she had anything to do with it. So I took the fall. Figured I'd spend a year in change or whatever in juvie and be back out in no time. No big deal, right? Especially when compared to the time that she'd have been jailed for as an adult. And so I waited patiently. I'd concocted so many ways I'd be able to make it up to her. I knew she must have blamed herself. But before I got out... There was an accident. An, an autocab hit my sister. And that was it. I took it hard. I blamed... I still blame myself. And no matter what I told myself, in my heart, I couldn't believe it was just happenstance. Do you know how rare it is for those things to hit a human? So, I became Tomcat by taking on her mantle. And I've spent years trying to find information inside Parallax to prove someone inside the company called a hit on my sister. Failing that, I've been trying to find a way to bring them down the way she always wanted. So, I guess what I'm getting at, after all of that, is that I've been manipulating you and Turing from the very start, in a sense. I probably never would have agreed to help you if I didn't think it would lead me closer to driving a knife into the heart of that company. And at every turn, I've been steering you to dig deeper in ways I can't as a convicted hacker. But I guess... I guess the little bot has grown on me. Maybe even you, too. And I don't want to be the person who uses their friends like tools. You've been nothing but nice to me. Okay, but how has Tomcat lied to us, if at all? I know they want us, they, they want to use us, but...
seems like our interests kind of align, right? We want to take down Parallax. Tomcat wants to take down Parallax. Do you think we're still on the right course? I do. That's why I'm telling you this now, rather than letting you find out on your own later. I don't want you to think I engineered this whole thing just out of revenge. The threat of Big Blue is real, and we have to do something. It's bigger than me, and my vendetta. I just wanted to get that off my chest. I'm exhausted, Nelavanda. I've been carrying around this grudge for so long, I'm ready for it to just be over. I thought the closer I got, the easier it would be. But I was wrong. Catherine was so much of what I wanted to be. And... I guess I just felt like it was my cross to bear. Anyway, thanks for hearing me out. Nelavanda, Tomcat, I'm ready. Good. If we're gonna do this thing, we've already wasted enough time. I've marked the location of the data center on your map. You'll have to go in and get the source code mostly on your own, but I'll load on some programs to give you an edge, Turing. We'll do our best, Tomcat. But why did your accent change? <laughs> Nothing gets by you, does it? I guess I just felt like I needed a change. It was time to move on. Moving on, huh? Something to think about. Speaking of moving on, get going, you two. I have lots of code to write, and I'm not getting to work as long as we're standing here. Stay in touch. Of course, Tomcat. Thank you again. Good luck. Oh, we're back here again. Who knew a paralyzed data center operated on the same KCOB coalition block as Augmented Eye all along? I'm certain it's all a coincidence, but it's unsettling being back here. It's the nasty kind of coincidence that makes you look for plots where there are none. The building we're looking for is over there to the left. We should try to finesse our way in. We don't want to alert Parallax to our actions before we make our main assault on their server complex. Hmm. Might have to deal with this maintenance person. And it is kind of co quite a coincidence that this is right here. Next to the augmented eye. Hmm. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to try to hack into the Parallax Data Node. <laughs>